Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen and I'm back. Today we're going to do the port scanner on Free Code Camp. It's part of the information security certification and check it out. I got a I got a mic now, so hopefully the audio isn't too bad anymore. Like it won't pick up my my computer's fan anymore, so that'll be good. And I'm going back to a Back to my roots doing a free code camp tutorial and hopefully you guys like it. So today, yeah, we're going to be doing this port scanner. Kind of explains a little bit about what to do here. We're going to be doing the project on REPL.it. I'll show you what we're making. I'm going to go through it step by step in a little bit. And as you can see, it ran eight tests in 31 and a half seconds, which is pretty slow. And it actually takes like three or four minutes for this thing to like boot up and actually start showing these uh, open ports. So I think that's the reason why I thought this thing was broken when I first tried it. And then it it was like almost a year now. <laughs> and now I'm getting back to it. Okay, so let's get started. Let's open up REPL.IT, the starter code, the boilerplate project. Takes a little bit to boot up. Hopefully you're logged in. If you're not logged in, it will probably prompt you. And what do we have to work with right off the bat? Oh yeah. We just have this function. So it just says, you know, we're calling this function and we're passing in a range of ports and it's supposed to check every single one of those to see if they're open. If verbose mode is true, then it will print out in this format. Otherwise, it'll just give a list of open ports. And yeah, overall, pretty simple. The more complicated thing is how do you actually get this thing to work? Well, they give you a hint with the socket library. But what I did was I just looked up make a port scanner in Python and then it came up with yeah, Geeks for Geeks. This is a good website for this is a good website for some code that you can steal, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, it's right here. I just looked at this. I was like, oh, okay, this looks pretty interesting. You search for in these ports and then you do socket.socket .socket and pass in this stuff. Set a default timeout. Also, this get by host name uh, function is pretty important. So what I did, did was I just, if this stuff would <laughs> stop popping up. What I did was I just copied all this and brought it over to here. And then I just started changing stuff on it to try and uh, get the test to pass and just get it working. It is kind of annoying to keep having to rerun it because it takes like three or four minutes to for it to actually run through all the all the ports but yeah i'm just gonna go line by line on this for from what i have and so yeah the first thing we want to do is define the ip ip is going to be an empty string and then we're going to have a try catch block or in this case it's actually try accept in python and you got to make sure the, the tabs are all good in python okay so our ip is going to equal socket dot get host by name everything lowercase and then we pass in the target. So the target is gonna be, uh, let's see here. The target's gonna be either a URL or an IP address. And they might be valid, they might not be valid, but we, we have to deal with either, either case. So once we get the IP, we're gonna start running through them. And that's with a for loop. And we're just gonna do for each port in our range. And we're gonna go through our port range and do that for, for this. We're gonna do port range first value and port range the second value since it's an array that's passed in so 75 to 85 after we do that we're going to do s equals socket dot socket pass in the socket dot af dot uh, inet and socket dot sock stream if i wanted to i could have just copied that from here right here i i can actually copy yeah i'll just do it uh type typing out after that we can do socket dot set default timeout everything lowercase once again looks kind of weird especially coming from javascript where everything is camel case and i spelled socket wrong there we go and then we're gonna do result equals s dot connect x and we're gonna pass in the ip and the port as a tuple i guess and then if result equals zero then we know that it exists and we're gonna go open ports dot append the port and then we're going to go s dot close so we close that connection all right cool so that's that then we have a series of accept blocks here some errors that can occur 
First one, if we just do a keyboard interrupt, keyboard interrupt, we're just going to return exiting program. Yeah. And then we're going to have another one. So this is going to check for a different type of exception. We're going to check for socket dot guy error. So like a gate error maybe. And then this is just going to be return error invalid IP address. But actually, we also want an if statement in here. Uh, if the target is a URL and we get this error, we actually want it to say invalid host name instead of invalid IP address. So I do that with a regular expression to check for letters. So we're going to do if re.search. And if this has letters in it, we're going to go A through Z, A through Z, big case. And we're going to pass in the target. So if the target has letters in it, so if it's a URL, then we actually want to return error invalid host name, like so. One more except here is socket.error. And this is just going to be return error invalid host name or invalid address, invalid IP address. Error invalid IP address, same as the one above it. All right, so that will return the open ports, but we don't have verbose mode yet. And also we need to add that to this definition, to this function. We're gonna add verbose equals false. False is the default, but if they pass in true, then it will print out in a very beautiful fashion. And this is actually the hard part about this whole project. Because like this, this could be you know done already, but we have to also add in this verbose mode, which is makes things a little bit more difficult. And I guess I could run it and just show you what we have so far. It'll take a little bit though. It'll take a little while. Oh, maybe not because soccer is not defined. Where did I do that? Right here, socket. Let's try that again. Soccer is not defined, line nine. Right here again. For some reason I press R instead of T a lot. There we go, now it's running, but it it's just, it looks like this, but it's actually doing it. It just takes like, three minutes. So yeah, I'll just wait for that. All right. So it finally ran and we got open ports 80, open ports 80, 80. And then we got a traceback error. It looks like not really sure why that happened, but maybe it'll go away if we keep working on this. If it doesn't, then I'll try and figure out why that's happening. We're getting a list of ports. Sometimes there's an error, but we want the, to be able to have it in this format. And that's what we're going to be working on now. So underneath here, we're going to have host because we're going to need host name for this. Even if we don't know what the host name is before, we're going to try and look it up. So like even if an IP address is, is passed in, we still want to be able to say what the URL of that IP address is. And to do that, we're going to do host equals none as default. And then we're going to do another try except block. So our try block is going to have host equals socket dot get host by address type thing and, and then we pass in the ip and then we get the first value out of that because it comes in a like a list of three items and we want to get the first one and then the error that occurs is socket dot hair or h error maybe host error maybe that's what it stands for and if that happens then we just want to set our host back to none and then continue with our program so here we're going to actually format our string. We're going to say final string equals open ports for. So the starting of this, uh, this beautiful string. And then we're going to say if our host does not equal none, then we want to add that to our final string. So final string plus equals our URL. I'm going to do a little like template string uh, in Python here. URL. And then we're also going to add the IP inside parentheses. And to put in those values, all we have to do is do a dot format on it and then pass in our URL, which is going to be the host, and our IP, which equals the IP that we passed in right here and that we got with this function right here, socket.get host by name. All right, so otherwise, if host does equal none, what do we want to do? Well, we still need to add something to our final string, but in this case, it's just going to be the IP and it's not gonna have parentheses around it. So we're just gonna add that format and add the IP there. And then after that, we're gonna add the ending stuff. So port and service, we're gonna add, so final string plus equals. I guess we should probably add a, a new line there. 
at the end, so it'll actually cut down to the next line. Do that with backslash n. And then we're going to say if verbose, so if verbose is true, then we're going to say our header equals port. And then there's, I think, five spaces between this. So one, two, three, four, five, and then service backslash n for a new line. So there we're putting that port service there. And then we have to do a loop to loop through our ports. First, I'm going to define a body though. And then we're going to do for port in open ports. Our body is going to add some stuff here. It's going to be our port, which I'm going to call p and then dot format. We're going to do p equals port. And then we're going to add the service name. And the way we do that, well, first of all, I need to add some spaces so that they're evenly spaced out every time. So I'm going to do space times nine minus the length of the port. So here this port can be 80, it can be 80, 80. So those are two different lengths. One of them's two, one of them's four. And then we just do nine minus four, or nine minus two, and that's how many spaces we're going to put in between. And then we're going to do plus. Now we're going to get the service name. So I'm going to put SN in here, dot format, and we're going to go SN equals socket dot get serve by port and then pass in the port and that should get the service name of that and then underneath there we're going to say if this is so that we don't add a new line at the end so we're going to say if it's at the end so we're going to go if open ports length of open ports minus one does not equal the port then we're going to go body plus equals new line so actually we're checking that it's not at the end so if it's not at the end then we're going to add a new line if it is at the end then we're just not going to run this line here so and just continue on in the for loop but it, it'll be at the end so it'll probably just be complete and then also inside this if statement but outside of the for loop we're going to return our final string plus our header plus our body and that should be the, the puzzle pieces to make this beautiful string right here. So the final string has open port for this URL and IP address. And then the header has the port service. And then the body has the port and service name in a beautiful format. And that should be it. It should pass all the tests. I'm going to try it out and see what happens. See if I made any mistakes along the way. All right, let's run it. All right, so as you can see, it failed because I named it soccer and not socket right here line 29 if i put that as socket now hopefully it'll work i think that was the only error hopefully now it'll work let's try running it again it takes a little while to run oh there we go we got our first uh first line on here open port 80 next one open port 8080 took a couple minutes for that to show up but now it's looks like it's running through it pretty good now there's our beautifully formatted string, and it'll go to the next one. There's the next one, hackthesite.org, and then an open port for scanme.nmap. And now it's running the tests. And if we did this correctly, it should pass all the tests. And there's an F, so that probably means it failed. Hopefully not, but ooh, three fails. No, uh, four fails. What the heck happened? The fudge, man. Oh. I forgot an S. Oh my gosh. I forgot an S. Okay. Why? Open ports. Uh, where is that? Open ports. Boom. Was that it? Is that why it failed these ones? Oh, this one. It wanted one additional element. Huh. Okay. Name re is not defined. Also, that is a issue. <laughs> yep. I need to import re up here. Okay. Is that all the issues? Hopefully it is. Hopefully this just fixes itself. Ooh, actually, I know why. Uh, for port range, I have to go port range one plus one so that it actually goes through all the way to it. So what was happening was it's just doing 80, 79 and not, or it, it doesn't actually check for 80, 90, but we want it to. Yeah, it was only going to 80, 89 before now it'll go all the way up to 80 90 so hopefully that fixes that problem and then the rest of them should be fixed by the that one ports I just gotta add the s so yeah let's rerun this it should pass all the tests now i'm pretty confident all right here comes the open ports and now it's running the tests everything looks good up here we'll see if the tests agree two errors what the fudge name or service not known get host by name did i not put that in the try block i did read out search missing one required positional argument oh 
Uh, okay. <sighs> I gotta move this target to inside of that parenthesis. Was that the only thing? Yeah. Gosh darn it. Now I gotta run these tests again. Just gonna take like another five minutes. All right, let's just do it. Oh, I see. So a dot means it passes. See, the last time it had two E's there, which meant there was the two errors. Ah, I see. You can do it. Yes. It ran the eight tests. All passed. Okay. Let's go. All right. So there we have it. That's the port scanner for you. I found this project pretty annoying to complete because it takes like, you know, three to four minutes for the socket to spin up and actually start scanning ports. But hopefully you guys can do it faster now that you have this uh, tutorial to help you out. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to comment down below and tell me what you learned, what you didn't learn. If you have any questions on this stuff, I'm happy to help. And thanks for watching. I'll see ya. Bye.